This is what it's all about right here. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to photograph a beautiful reflection nebula through my telescope. When it comes to astrophotography, getting away from city light pollution is one of the biggest steps you can take towards a better image. My wife and I left the gradients, glare, and muddy orange sky of the city behind and rented this 85-acre property under Bortle Three Skies. If you're lucky enough to find a dark sky spot during the new moon phase to set up your camera and telescope, I suggest shooting something dim and in the broad spectrum. Galaxies, reflection nebulae, dark nebulae, anything with those beautiful glowing blues that are best revealed in true color. At this time of year, there are a few great targets that come to mind. The Andromeda Galaxy, the Triangulum, the Pleiades, and one of my personal favorites, the Iris Nebula. I've photographed the Iris Nebula in Cepheus before, but never under dark skies like this and never at a wide focal length. I'll use a one-shot color camera without any specialized filters to capture the true natural colors of the night sky. Being able to take a five minute exposure without any filters that doesn't appear as pure white is a beautiful thing. The Iris Nebula lies in the northern constellation Cepheus and at this time of year it rises high into the sky and I can pretty well capture it all night. The best part about this nebula isn't the haunting glow emitted by that central star reflecting the iris, it's all that surrounding dim dark dust that's scattered around the space. These patches are like thick smoke that block the starlight behind them. And to capture these details, you really need a lot of exposure time under dark skies. Tonight, I'll collect three minute sub exposures through my F4.9 telescope. I'll add this to an existing collection of images captured last night, and I'm hoping to hit that seven to eight hour total integration mark. The telescope is a William Optics RedCat 71 with a focal length of 350 millimeters. You might think that that's a short focal length to use on an object of this size, but again, I wanna capture that interesting dust that surrounds the primary target. Everything is running on top of my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, and I'm using the ZWO ASI Air Plus to automate and control the imaging session. The device allows me to control everything from my phone, so I can keep tabs on things out here while I'm inside playing cards by the fire. I'll have a ton of image exposures to stack when I get home. I decided to shoot three minute exposures tonight as opposed to five as I did last night. I don't expect to see much difference between the stack of three minute subs versus the five minute subs, but it's a kind of a cool little experiment to run. I'm just thinking I might be able to recover a little bit more of the detail in the bright core of the Iris Nebula using those three minute sub exposures. The camera I'm using is a ZWO ASI 2400 MC Pro, a full frame one shot color camera that creates some really high resolution, sharp, crispy photos. Maybe a little too sharp and crispy for some. One of my favorite things about using this camera so far is that it's such a huge high resolution image, so many pixels, that I'm able to crop a final composition of my liking and it's still a massive image. I've even got Ashley hooked on astrophotography with the ASI Air now. She's using an ASI Air Pro on her iPhone to run an adorably similar mini version of my setup. We've got a real papa bear, mama bear thing going on right now. Don't you miss that laptop you used to use, Ash? No, not at all. I'm so glad it's gone. I actually didn't realize how similar these two rigs are just in a smaller scale. So we've got the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro with the Red Cat 71 and an ASI 2400 MC Pro camera and then the ASI Air Plus. On Ashley's rig, we have the Skywatcher HEQ5, the ASI 294 MC Pro one-shot color camera, the ASI Air Pro, and of course the Red Cat 51. How perfect is that? You having fun? Yeah. Good. Should put shoes on. 
so we booked this place very last minute based on the forecast and I think it might be my favorite dark sky rental yet. This little cabin sits 250 meters up on a hill and there's unspoiled views to the east and to the south. We're well into fall now. There was snow on the ground when we got here, but today was sunny and mild. The Astrospheric app shows crystal clear skies tonight, and I'm banking on that to be true. Rudy absolutely loves it here. It's a dog-friendly rental, and there's a winding river at the base of the property, and he's been enjoying running up and down the muddy path to go check on things throughout the day. This is really a dream property in my eyes. I've always dreamt of the idea of living somewhere on top of a hill with these gorgeous views. The Bortle 3 sky doesn't hurt either. This is what it's all about right here. <laughs> Here's a look at the sub-exposures on the Iris Nebula uh, through the ASI Air Plus app. You can see the small Iris Nebula in the middle there and then some dark cloudy dust around it and that's what I'm interested in pulling out in the processing. So it might not look like much right now but I'm really excited about the photo that's hidden within this data right here. This entire weekend has been incredible. I knew we were gonna have a good trip from the moment we got here. If you've never rented an Airbnb for astrophotography purposes, I highly recommend it. If you think about it, all you really need is a power outlet, an opening to the sky, and a place to sleep. He is so tired. He's dead, I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen him this tired. No, he's like a rag doll. Oh. You had a good time. Would you come back to this place? Yeah. Yeah, I want to come back. Definitely. I wonder if we could book it for next weekend. <laughs>